guys this is dr paul once again thank you very much for tuning to our channel today and uh, you are welcome to visit our website we have a website at uh, www.usmlvideos.net that is www.usmlvideos.net please feel free to visit our website and uh, you can browse through hundreds of videos we have posted as you prepare for usml examination Today I want to talk a few minutes about metformin, a very, very important medication. You know, we have uh, these medications for type 2 diabetes, mainly sulfonylureas and bigvanites. A new class of medications are coming now, like incretins, exenatide, and cetagliptin. And that's a, that, let us spare it for some other time. So the main classes are bigvanites, that is uh, metformin, then sulfonylurea, stolbutamide, tolazamide, estoxamide, and uh, gliburide, glipizide. Those are the sulfonylureas. Then also alpha glucosidase inhibitors. These are acarbose and meglitol. These acarbose and meglitol, they are alpha glucoside inhibitors. Then thiazolidone dions. Those are uh, rosiglitazone and pioglitazone. So they are another class of uh, drugs we use for type 2 diabetes. And uh, finally, incretins, exenatide and cetagliptin. So today, let us talk about uh, metformin. Metformin and fenformin, these are the two big oneides that are uh, started to use for type 2 diabetes. Fenformin was stopped because of its risk with uh, increased lactic acidosis. Even metformin has the risk of lactic acidosis, but not that severe. So metformin is the most important bigmonide in market today. Unlike sulfonylureas, bigmonides or metformin does not need the presence of uh, pancreatic beta cells. It, is not, it does not need the functioning pancreatic beta cells. Because uh, metformin it acts by inhibiting gluconeogenesis. So it is uh, it, it, it basically a functional agent. It inhibits the action of AMPK, adenosine monophosphate activated protein kinase. That's why in people who do not have AMPK gene in their bodies, metformin is not useful for them because metformin acts through the inhibition of AMPK. And AMPK, it is uh, a very important, uh, it has a very important function in gluconeogenesis. So basically, all you have to remember is uh, metformin acts by inhibiting gluconeogenesis. The other point I want to stress is the clinical pharmacology. Metformin has a half-life, 1.5 to 3 hours. It does not bind to plasma proteins. And also, it is not metabolized in human body, and it is excreted unchanged by the kidneys. So those are the four important things. The half-life is 1.5 to 3 hours. It is not bound to plasma proteins. It is uh, not metabolized by human body, and it is excreted unchanged by the kidneys. And now let us start about indications. You can use metformin to control diabetes in diabetes type 2 along with the diet. Whenever the patient has uh, symptoms, you can start it. Now, a significant benefit of metformin is, I mean, when we talk about metabolic syndrome, it is not associated with weight gain. You see, if you treat patients with insulin, there is the risk of weight gain. If you treat patients with the sulfonylureas, there is the risk of weight gain. But when you use metformin, there is no associated risk of weight gain. That's why metformin is very useful in the treatment of syndrome X or metabolic syndrome. Now, so it's not, uh, now, now let's talk about contraindications or where it is not indicated. Metabol uh, metformin is not indicated in uh, type 1 diabetes. It is contraindicated in diabetic patients with renal insufficiency because metformin is excreted through kidneys. So you should not give this drug to patients with renal insufficiency. And the other thing is uh, metformin's major risk factor 
is uh, is uh, increased production of lactic acidosis so lactic acidosis you need to remember this point it's very 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 important it causes increased production of lactic acidosis so if a patient has a uh, liver dysfunction you should not start this because lactic acidosis is cleared by the liver if the patient has alcoholic abuse it sh you should use it carefully because alcohol it reduces the nucleotides which are useful in the clearance of uh, uh, in the hepatic clearance of uh, metformin so those are the four important things you need to remember the uh, if the patient has thy renal insufficiency don't start it if the patient has hepatic insufficiency be careful if the patient is an alcohol abuser don't use it also if the patient has uh, in has problems with metabolic syndrome um, this is a this is an important uh, addition to that uh, treatment now metformin the dosages it comes in 500 mg 850 mg 1000 mg you can start with the low dose and go up to 2550 mg above 1000 mg the effects are uh, i mean they diminished with uh, dosage now adverse effects the most common most frequent adverse effects are gastrointestinal like nausea vomiting diarrhea gastric uh, discomfort so in 20% of patients the side effects are related to the gastrointestinal effects the second thing we need to remember is uh, it also causes uh, vitamin b12 deficiency because metformin decreases the absorption of uh, vitamin b12 the other point is uh, metformin does not cause hypoglycemia if the patient is complaining of hypoglycemia that's not due to metformin it is something else like insulin so uh, it's not a problem and finally precautions stop metformin if you are sending patient for a procedure a surgical procedure and also stop metformin when you are going to use an iodinated contrast for example if if you have a patient is going he has a chest pain and you are going to send him for a nuclear stress test you should stop metformin because metformin is uh, excreted through the kidneys and uh, iodinated contrasts are also excreted through the kidneys when the two are added there will be a definite acute renal failure so in acute renal failure don't give metformin stop it also other thing is uh, elderly patients general rule is if the patient is uh, more than 65 to 70 years old and has some renal insufficiency don't even bother to start them on metformin i mean i do not start people on metformin about age 70 irrespective of the renal function because you never know in this subset of patients you never know what is going to happen to their uh, um, renal function so those are the most important points and as usual please feel free to visit us at uh, www.usmlevideos.net that is www.usmlevideos.net thank you and uh, you are welcome to post your comments on this video and um, for those of you preparing for usmle clinical skills i am recommending the book usmle smasher you can buy this on our website and uh, this book is very very useful many of you go for expensive courses like uh, kaplan and uh, uh, exam master and all those courses that cost thousands of dollars all you need is to buy this one book usmle smasher for step 2 clinical skills this book has excellent information on all the tips that you need for this examination and that's what i studied for my one examination and i recommend it to you thank you very much god bless you